Kiri Putnik, and I'm with WriteScale, and I'm going to be the MC for this webinar today. And let's go to the next slide, please. Let me talk about uh, the speakers first. You've heard from me, and I'm the ISV Permit Program Evangelist for WriteScale. In that capacity, I talk about WriteScale quite a bit, as you might imagine, but also about the cloud in general. And that's what I'm doing here today. We also have from Eltec. Mike DeSilver, he is their VP of Cloud Services, and he's going to talk to you about their, um, about their offering for scaling websites in the cloud using their brand scale product and how uh, marketing uh, people, brand managers, people in charge of marketing campaigns can take advantage of that and how to um, uh, leverage the power of the cloud in that respect. We also have from Elte Claudio Gentile, he's a very experienced solutions architect that is going to be giving you a demo of their brand scale technologies and how all that stuff comes together. And from Amazon Web Services, we have Mike Culver that is going to talk about uh, more details of the foundational technologies, the, the Amazon services like the Elastic Compute Cloud and S3 and some of the other components that, that fit together and how all that works. So next slide, please. Let me cover the agenda. We'll begin by discussing a little bit of right scale to just put everything in the proper context. And since I'm speaking, I just want to say a few things about who we are. Then we're going to have uh, Mike DeSilver talking about uh, a big challenge for marketers that in this, in this instance he's describing as a success disaster. Uh, some of us have seen it in our own companies or in others where they launch a marketing campaign that's successful beyond their expectation, and they essentially snatch the feed from the jaws of success. It generates so much interest, so much buzz, so many visitors to the website that it just can't keep up. It either slows down or it crashes. And this can have some uh, quite deleterious effect on your marketing programs and maybe even your brand overall. So Mike will cover some information about that. He will go into a customer case study about how they've helped a very large brand uh, set up uh, the infrastructure for the marketing campaign in such a way that they didn't have to uh, deal with problems such as that, and he will move into their product, the Eltec product, the brand scale overview, and describe what they've been able to create uh, building on technologies from Amazon and from RightScale. And from there, we'll move on to my cover, even an overview of the Amazon technologies, as I was mentioning a moment ago, this infrastructure as a service, cloud computing capabilities that they have. Moving on to Claudio Gentile, giving us a live demonstration. In my opinion, it's a very interesting part of, of, of the session today, actually seeing the technology in action. You'll be able to uh, see how he's using the, the different components to actually create the systems that, that we're describing. And from there, we'll go into a Q&A session. And I want to mention something about that. You don't have to wait until the end to submit your questions. Uh, on your GoToWebinar control panel that you have on your screen, there's a text area where you can submit questions. So please go ahead and, and send those our way as soon as uh, you, you come up with them. We'll actually look at them as the webinar progresses. And if we can, we'll answer them by uh, adding that information as we, uh, as, as we cover the topics. And if not, we'll definitely uh, cover them during the Q&A part. And we're very happy to uh, uh, answer as many questions as you have out there. So with that, let's go to the next slide, please. Let me begin by saying a couple of things about RightScale. RightScale, as I mentioned a moment ago, is a cloud management platform. Think of it as an orchestration layer that allows you to um, organize and more easily manage the systems that you're building in the cloud. From my cover, you're going to hear about, uh, quite literally, their ability to rent your servers by the hour or to rent your storage per gig per month. So they have these building blocks. Almost think of them as compute primitives. And with RightScale, we allow you to actually build systems out of those. We have a pre-configured library of server templates so that you don't need to be an expert at setting up load balancers and databases and application servers. And we have the ability to scale groups of, say, web servers up and down the, depending on the current load at the moment and to really uh, automate a lot of the things that operations people, that sysadmins would be doing uh, manually otherwise. So what you have with WriteScale is this whole suite of the pre-built components and the automation uh, that makes it possible to then create websites 
that can more dynamically grow and shrink and more and be managed uh, more easily by avoiding some of the complexity and expertise that you would otherwise need. And this is where LTEC, uh, LTEC's value add becomes very evident. They've taken this foundational technologies and created their brand skill product so that for brand managers, for people that control marketing budgets, that are in charge of marketing plans, they don't need to have this in-depth of expertise in the technological area. They can leverage the knowledge and the expertise from LTEC so that on the internet side, they know that their websites will run properly and according to plan as they launch their marketing programs. And sometimes you have no idea how much traffic you're going to have on these things. And uh, this way you can avoid having to buy a lot of equipment at the front that you might not need just in case you get a lot of traffic or a ton of traffic. And with that, I would like to actually, I'm going to jump back, Mike. With that, I would like to pass the presentation to Mike DeSilva from LTEC. Thanks, uh, Yuri. I appreciate it. Uh, as Yuri said, I'm Mike DeSilver. I'm VP of Cloud Services here at LTEC. Uh, so today we're going to talk about some specific use cases uh, that are ranging from marketing events to some user experience issues. Uh, so we're going to uh, start off with one of the most popular use cases and issues we see from customers, and those are known as uh, success disasters. And these are defined as either a slightly predictable yet overwhelming response to an advertising campaign or you know, what we like to refer to and others like to refer to as the Oprah effect or better known as the big effect. Uh, we've all heard and seen sites that have gone down like this. So hopefully you haven't had the experience yourself. Uh, we're going to make sure you don't in the future. So here we see the degradation of a site slowly based on an event outside of your control. Uh, as we all know, this tends to happen at the most inopportune time, uh, the moment when you're receiving a real large influx of visitors. And it's going to cripple your site and possibly your sales during a time when you could be selling the most. So, you know, now the dig effect and the Oprah effect are very easy use cases to talk about. So since our jobs are all about making sure our customers are having the best user experience possible on our sites and our microsites, let's focus on just that. Uh, so what we're really saying is, what if your site doesn't go down? What if it only crawls? What if it just becomes completely unusable? So as you can see by this graph, Research shows that three seconds of load time is optimal for any page on your site. The drop-off is significant, even at five seconds, where half of your users have left your site completely frustrated. Uh, this doesn't just reflect on your site. It also affects uh, your brand, and it really reflects on, on you as a business. So how many of these visitors do you think have left and gone to a competitor's site? So, this slide here is pretty important. Oddly enough, Google and Microsoft actually teamed up for something. And it was for a presentation at Velocity uh, in 2009. So Velocity, by the way, is a uh, conference run by O'Reilly. focuses on web performance, operations. So this shows the impact of a two-second increase in load time over varying intervals. Uh, as they added more and more delay, they saw that not only was there less uh, click-through revenue per visitor, but uh, these visitors actually performed fewer sites per day even after the delay was removed. Uh, so that's important. Uh, if you look at that, what it's really telling you is that the brand was affected. It was affected for an extended period of time. Uh, it could literally, it could take months to get back that kind of credibility. So really what we also be doing is looking at ourselves and saying, how does that affect our brand perception if something like that was to happen to us? And are people going to go back to our site or our microsite? So now we can look at how this can affect revenue and your budgets. Uh, in the first scenario we've laid out here, based on the previous slide, we showed that an optimal time is three seconds. So let's say your website takes six seconds to load, and your cost per click is 35 cents. Now, with a potential visitor loss of 50%, in effect, your cost per click doubles. So really, how much of your marketing dollars is actually reaching potential customers? And unfortunately, this also affects your brand. 
It can leave customers with kind of feeling disconnected to you, like you don't care, or it can even go as far as having a negative view of your brand. So here we just want to show the different, you know, internal, external factors that affect your website's performance. Uh, I don't think I need to go through each one. Uh, I think we all know problems we all face on a day-to-day -day basis with website performance, and I'm sure we can all relate with, you know, hopefully we all can relate with successful viral marketing campaigns. Uh, but obviously, database load, rich media, uh, front end, back end architectures. This is all stuff we've all dealt with. So we want to show you an actual case study that we ran into. So we had a major snack foods company, and they were running a 16-week online coupon promotion. Now the nature of this promotion was that the microsite was to go live at a specific time on a specific day of the week, every week for 15 hours a day. They literally spent millions of dollars in online print and TV promotion. So week one came around. And the sheer load of the traffic that came to their site took it down within the first couple hours. Like, think about how that would feel if that was your brand. So they called us, uh, thankfully, and we had some challenges. Uh, first thing they did, we had to re-architect the back end of the site completely. We had to uh, put it on a elastic or almost infinite infrastructure, and our goal stated by them with 250,000 requests per second and incur no added licensing costs at all. So we decided to rebuild the site. It was originally .NET, and we rebuilt it on Ruby on Rails for some added scalability. We deployed the site on Amazon Web Services, and we used RightScale as the management and scaling platform. We were able to auto-scale up to 100 servers when needed, and our system could handle 100,000 requests per second, which obviously is twice the amount that was requested. Um, the most cost-saving part of this entire architecture was that once the load decreased, the servers were decommissioned, which saved tens of thousands of dollars in infrastructure costs. And you know, in theory, you, you could not do that without cloud infrastructure. It would be literally impossible to do that in a traditional environment. And our, our most staggering statistic is that the original site took 22 weeks to build, but we were able to build our engine and deploy in two days. So here are the what ifs. Um, you know, viral marketing can be the most unpredictable thing we all deal with. So what if you initiate a campaign that surges in popularity and you didn't expect it? And you know, we all deal with the decisions that are made from the top. And I don't think they all provide us with sufficient time to prepare. So what if your organization decides to run a million dollar on air campaign starting next week? Are we all prepared for that? Um, you know, there's influences outside of our control as well that drive potential customers to us. Um, one of the major ones that we've kind of already alluded to is, you know, what if, what if you're one of Oprah's favorite things for this holiday season and you don't prepare for that? Or, you know, what if the president is on TV and he, you know, mentions you as a great example of American engineering or something. I mean, are you really prepared for the amount of resources you'll need to take on that kind of a search? So how do you protect your brand and your marketing investment? In other words, what do you do? How can you protect it from the factors we've outlined? Unexpected successes, those normal, typical performance issues we all deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. How can we take care of that. So our answer is brand scale. Brand scale, I'll just read this slide. Brand scale is the combination of scalable software architecture and scalable infrastructure, which assures that your site will always run at peak performance, regardless of the traffic volume the site is experiencing at any given time. So what does that mean? It means there's three options that you have for brand scale. And you can break them down pretty simply. Option one, you like to say you bring the creative and we'll bring the engine. So you simply deliver us your artifacts, that includes PSD files, uh, and a storyboard for the site, the site's general flow, and we'll deploy it using our custom engine, completely scaled, completely ready. Option two, you already have a site out there. Uh, you're worried about it, 
and uh, you need some help. So you let us take it. We optimize it. We redeploy it using our engine, fully scaled, fully ready. Then there's option three. We'll let you build the engine. We'll let you deploy it on Amazon Web Services using right scale. But we'll manage it. We'll make sure it runs smoothly. We'll make sure it does not go down. It will be fully scaled and ready. Uh, we're able to do that. We have an offering called Cloud Manage, which we'll talk about to, uh, more towards the end of the presentation, uh, which is also an add-on to option one or option two, if you so choose. So let's talk a little bit about our typical network architecture. Um, whenever I talk about architecture, I always defer to our chief architect, Claudio Gentile. So uh, Claudio is going to come in and talk a little bit about the difference between typical architecture and what we like to build here at Eltec. So I'll turn it over to Claudio. Thanks, Mike. Just wanted to introduce myself real quick. My name is Claudio Gentile. I'm the chief solutions architect here at Eltec. Just to discuss a little bit about what we normally see in a typical architecture, it's really what we see every day in a managed co-location facility and the data centers across the world. Collections of hardware that a customer has either leased, sometimes for as long as a full year at a time, or even bought outright on their own, are placed within the data center and managed for a fixed or sometimes varying fee. These servers are normally powered on 24 by 7, and their sole purpose is to serve the everyday content we may see on a website, web service, or even just powering a background service such as streaming video. Companies usually take one of two approaches when deploying their content to these servers, either a lean or a very robust environment. In a lean environment, just enough servers are deployed to accommodate the needs of the website or application, which for example can be two separate servers, one application server and one database server. Very basic. In a more robust architecture, however, multiple servers are available for each role, offering a layer of redundancy as well as fixed scalability. But what's the cost for that, you might ask? Some managed service providers will lease a fully managed server to you for as much as $1,200 per month. In a very small deployment, you can see that that calculates to tens of thousands of dollars annually in IT cost and investment. If you are not incurring high traffic or load on your website 24 by 7, you're really spending money on a robust environment that is rarely being utilized or providing any material benefit to your organization. You have servers just sitting there wasting power, money, and space. The end result here being a huge cost investment just to be prepared for the what-if scenarios that we're talking about today. Let's not forget the potential delays involved in this. There could be days, if not weeks, spent on procuring, provisioning additional servers in such an environment in the case we do need to expand our capacity. Let's not forget the time that it would take for your staff to load the applications and software and manage to go through testing phases as well as deploying into a production environment. You can never really react fast enough in the traditional environment when faced with capacity issues. But what do we do in the LTAC brand scale architecture? In our conventional deployments, we prepare your deployment to be scalable on demand, not always on. One important piece to note about a typical environment and a cloud-based environment is that servers are commonly referred to as instances within the Amazon and right scale world. For all intents and purposes, you could consider the two words synonymous. A typical base deployment will consist of one or more load balancing instances a single application server where you would deploy your web application code, and whatever necessary instances are required to house database services. Traditionally, these would operate under MySQL, MySQL Server, or even Amazon RDS, which has recently become available. In addition, we utilize the technologies provided to us by RightScale to create a scalable array of key points in your application, which in effect allow you to clone an instance, scaling the quantity of application web service in your solution to an almost infinite number based on your demand and need. These arrays of servers are managed automatically within RightScale 
and can grow or shrink on demand based on different variables and alert conditions which we can predefine for you. A few great examples of key monitoring points in any server array are things such as high CPU utilization, low free memory, low free drive space, and even concurrent request connection counts to such items as an Apache web server. These are all monitored through the right scale infrastructure itself. Let's take a small scale real world example and show how brand scale's design architecture married with right scale services can preserve the quality, performance, and reputation of your site. I'm just going to show a very simple example here for what we have for our LTEC blog. Right now we have our LTEC blog managed within the right scale server environment. It's a very basic deployment that consists of a MySQL server, a single load balancer, one application server, and a test server that we'll talk about shortly later. As you can see on this base site, the LTEC blog site comes up at any given point in time. In this example, we are going to demonstrate the impact of a sudden heavy web traffic load on a fixed architecture for the LTEC blog site. Sometimes we have noticed that a new publication to our blog, along with mass communication of recent updates to news, can bring a high amount of traffic to our blog pages, causing a substantial slowdown during those first few hours. While the high traffic times can be predictable, we can never be for certain how intense they may be. As a best practice, we have a multiple tier architecture, as I've shown you, over in the right scale dashboard segmenting various components of the blog system into dedicated instances for load balancing, database, and web application instances. This lets us eliminate most bottlenecks encountered within a fully federated environment where all of these individual roles will be consolidated onto one server. To handle high load times, we've created a right scale server array. This array has been prepared to grow and react to any intensive load experienced by the blog application instances. We see positive results and active change in the arrays just after a few moments of unusually high loads encountered. I'd say on average we can go one to five instances in approximately 10 minutes when necessary. It's also good to know the right scale array can be configured to operate on a schedule basis, meaning you can predefine times for your array to grow as a preemptive action in anticipation of a high traffic situation. So let's say, for example, you may want to scale your architecture at 7 a.m. on a Friday, knowing you are sending a mass marketing email or notification out roughly 30 minutes later. You can be prepared in advance. There's no reason for unnecessary downtime. For most of this example, we will use a well-known Firefox plugin called Firebug to track page load times, but we'll be focusing on the request and response times of a page load to determine exactly how long it will take to load the main page, which most users first navigate to as an entry page for a blog. As you can see at the bottom of my browser, I have the Firebug plugin already installed and primed. By reloading the page, I can actually time and see the entire time it takes per request to load my site. At the very bottom, we can see right now on our connection, it's about roughly one second to load. This time does tend to vary, but for the most part does stay at below the one second level to load the entire page, graphical assets, style sheets, and any other associated content that we may have plugged onto our main page. For most of our audience with a deep technical background, most of this should flow well. But if there are any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them at the end of this demonstration. As you can see on the LTEC load blog, the page load times are well within acceptable tolerances when traffic is at a minimum. Checking in on our load balancer array, we can actually see right now the amount of servers we currently have deployed in the farm, which is fixed at two, with a capacity of 250 connections apiece. We find this to be a maximum amount of connections that any of our servers can handle when loading the LTEC blog. Near zero, very little amount of connections throughout the day. That's exactly how we like it. Now, 
let's go back into the right scale deployment and take a look at this instance called HTTP perf. I'm going to use this instance to generate a huge amount of traffic to the blog site using a well-known performance testing application called HTTP perf. We have set up a standalone instance, this one right here, with HTTP perf installed and ready for this demonstration. Conveniently, I'm able to launch through the right scale dashboard utilizing the right script that was already pre-made. I've now started the HTTP perf application, which is going to send a surge of traffic to my blog site. Let's check back in on the load balancer statistics and see how many connections we really have coming in right now. times there may be a short delay in kicking off any script here. But normally, very short. As you can see here, just from our current session counts, over 114 connections are coming in at any time to each server, and this number is continuing to growing. I'm even seeing now that my health checks are beginning to fail, which might implicate the performance on the site is not expected or at all what I want it to be. Let's check back in on the blog and see what the page load time impact is now that we have a large surge of traffic coming to our site. As you can see now, that number is more than tripled to 2.3 seconds, well beyond an acceptable reason. Trying to reload the page even shows further that the time that it takes for a page to load is increasing slowly over time. You may even find now where some of the requests are being rejected or simply throwing a server unavailable error message indicating that we can no longer access the resources at this point in time. Most of the lag that we're seeing right now is due to the high volume of traffic. As you can tell on this one last page load, it took almost 20 seconds for every component of this page to complete loading. This is rather unsuitable for general use. But our benefit here is the right scale array has already detected a surge in connections. Our predefined alerts and monitors in place are already starting to cause the array to begin a growth phase. As we can tell, one instance has already indicated a troubled state, while two more instances are beginning to launch at this time. This does take a few minutes to complete, so while we wait, I'm going to turn back over to Mike DeSilver to discuss the further benefits of brand scale. While we wait, you'll be able to see actions taking place in the notification section of the right scale dashboard here on your left, such as the one indicated where the array is now resizing by two and launching two additional instances to help carry the load. All right, thanks, Claudio. So in a couple minutes, uh, we're going to come back to Claudio so you can show you how the rest of the demo uh, goes. You can see how brand scale works. Uh, right now, I'm going to kind of keep this uh, on the side over here so you guys can watch these arrays in right scale. Uh, come up, uh, kind of show you the magic behind Red Scale and how we how we uh, architect the the back end. But the uh, real essential back end is Amazon Web Services. So I want to introduce Mike Culver. He's a cloud evangelist over at Amazon Web Services. He's going to tell you a little bit about what they have to offer uh, if you don't already know. Uh, and uh, I'll just turn it over to you, Mike. Here you go. Um, all right. Well, Mike, uh, Mike might have dropped off. Mike, uh, this is you jumping in. Uh, well, we have two mics, by the way, for music. For Mike Culver, you might have your own phone on mute, Mike. That I know that's happened to me before. You might want to check that. Tell you what, uh, Mike DeSilver. Unfortunately, I have Here seen. We go. Here we go. Oh, there you are, Mike. Can you hear me now? Sorry, sorry, folks. Um, I, I was muted and I didn't have control over it. Okay, so um, if we can go back full screen here, um, 
thanks everyone. I'm uh, Mike Culver with Amazon Web Services, and I'm really delighted to be on the uh, webinar today. And what I'd like to do is spend just a few minutes talking about what Amazon Web Services is up to. Uh, the other mic, if you could make me full screen here, you're still running the slides. So what uh, I, I'd like to do is start by talking for just a second about what cloud computing attributes are. And I, the reason I'm calling this cloud computing attributes is that I'd like to make this uh, clear that I'm talking about how Amazon Web Services work. I'm not trying to define cloud computing. We could spend the, probably the rest of the week having that conversation. So um, when uh, they get back to the, uh, here we go. Okay, so the, the first thing I'd like to point out is that really in a lot of ways what we're talking about is virtual servers. So what you're, what you're going to be running if you're talking about computing in the cloud is virtual servers that look and, and feel like uh, traditional servers. There's really no difference from, uh, between these servers and what you already know if you're, uh, if you're a person that's on the tech side and running servers. So you get full root access if it's Linux or administrator access if it's Windows. But we're, what we're doing is controlling these services with a web service. Thus the name cloud computing uh, as it relates to control of the servers. So it's, it's all about abstraction. You give up a little bit of control uh, sort of like you do with Java or .NET, but you get back a lot of productivity and other advantages, as we'll see. There's also this notion of on-demand provisioning. That is, you, it's sort of like turning on the light switch. The electricity is there when you need it. You turn it on, you light your light, you turn it off, and the bill stops. It's the same idea here. So it's, it's, it's uh, just what you need, just enough, just in time. And there's also this notion of scalability. That is, that the, the cloud appears to be infinite from the point of view of an individual user. Of course, there's no such thing as infinite at the end of the day, but, but the point is that the pool of servers in the cloud is large enough that it may as well be infinite from your point of view. And that's why what we saw in the demo just a moment ago worked so well, that in an on-demand manner, when you need more resources, it's as simple as using a uh, a web service API probably through something like the right scale uh, console that you just saw and, and likewise with automation that allows you to add and subtract uh, capacity as you need it. And remember it's not, it's not just about scaling up, it's probably almost more important to think about scaling down because it's this idea that you can scale down and you, there's, there's no lingering costs. You don't have a server left over that you, have, you had to pay for because you're only paying for what you need when you need it. And that, I, that sort of feeds into this next point, which is that there's, it's, it's pay for what you need when you need it and there's no catches here. You know, there's no sign up fees or minimums or anything like that. And then the final point is that, that there really is this efficiency of experts. And, and one way to think about that is that if you think about the environment in which these services run, in this particular case, in uh, the Amazon environment, they, uh, while it's dedicated hardware and dedicated service teams, this isn't somehow excess capacity or something like that from Amazon.com, the point is that you have those world-class teams who really understand security and really understand performance, and you basically are able to leverage that community knowledge, that body of knowledge, at no cost to you. So that, that works well for you. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So we have a, a variety of services available, a lot more than Amazon EC2, which is the virtual computing environment. I'm not going to talk about any of these. Um, we don't have time today. I just simply want to point out that there's a whole menu of other services available to you. It's a lot more robust than simply virtual computing. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, uh, so finally what I'd like to talk about is a little bit about the architecture or the infrastructure and the way it's laid out behind the curtain, if you will. We divide the Amazon cloud up into what we call regions and availability zones. And a region is pretty much what you think of as, as a region. So for example, we have US East, which is in the, uh, the Washington DC metro area. And then within that, we have multiple availability zones. Now, these are kind of conceptual drawings. So, for example, the U.S. East region actually has four availability zones, but I'm trying to keep it simple here. So, 
uh, within the region, each of these availability zones represents, uh, in essence, a physical data center. So if you scatter your web assets across these availability zones, then you've achieved an even higher degree of resiliency and load distribution than you would in a traditional environment. So, for example, if you scattered, let's say, for example, you have three web servers and you scatter them across each of these AZs, which you can do at no extra cost, then what happens is that A, uh, the load is distributed across three physical data centers. Not that any one couldn't have handled that because, you know, as you can imagine, there's there's a zillion servers already in each AZ. But the other thing is that one of the key learnings that we came up with as a result of building Amazon.com is that just because a data center goes offline, or in this case, what we're calling an availability zone, you know, that's not an excuse for Amazon.com to go off the air. So what we do is we scatter our assets across uh, various data centers or availability zones in the manner that you see here. And those colored circles represent private fiber networks that connect each of these. So even if some guy out in the parking lot decides to take a backhoe to the fiber cable, um, the remaining AZs are still online and you are able to stay on the air. So that actually turns out to be huge when it comes to the reliability uh, aspect of things. So with that, I think I'll stop talking and turn it back over to what I think everybody really came to the webinar to hear about, which is uh, more details about LTEC and RightScale. And uh, let's go back to that demo. Hey, thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. Um, all right, what we're going to do is I'm going to turn it back over to Claudio real quick. He's going to show you guys uh, what happened while, uh, while Mike was telling us a little bit about Amazon Web Services. Pretty sure everything came up. Uh, and uh, Claudio, go for it. Thanks again, Mike. Really appreciate it. All right, let's check back in on our array and see exactly what's happened over the past five minutes. As you can see, the array is still growing just a little bit because of some of the load that we're tossing in. Remember, I'm applying a pretty severe amount of load to ensure that everything is working correctly. And so far, it has been working correctly. By referencing back over here to our load balancer, we can even see now that more member servers have been added to the farm. Right now, a total of four. And the connection counts are rather low, being distributed across all four. Now, what does this mean for us? Let's check back to the blog site and see what a user would see in the event of this scaling taking place and now having completed. Remember, the last time we checked in and tried to load the page, it took over 18 seconds to complete. And it looks very successful from this front. With just slightly over a second page load time, it appears as though everything is now functioning normally and back within our line of expectation. Just from this demonstration, we may have exhausted just a total of a few dollars in additional instance costs for launching the array instances to support our single 24 by 7 instance during high load times. Total investment to handle this once a month issue? Perhaps $10, not too much more. The savings alone in the IT budget will let me invest surplus into other items besides additional infrastructure and maintenance, a true benefit in my mind, especially given the conditions of the economy. All right, thanks, thanks, Claudio. So, um, keep doing it. What, uh, what's left is uh, I, I put a slide in here for you guys to see the uh, what we offer as far as our our managed services offering. But really, I, I want to I'd rather do the Q and A a little bit. So since we don't have much time left. So we got some good questions that came across um, while, you, while you, everybody was watching. So I'm going to actually have uh, Claudio answer a couple of them. Uh, so Claudio, uh, the first question, actually we got a couple questions about load balancers. Uh, and if anybody else wants to feel free, but uh, what load balancer uh, are we using? Well, Mike, the load balancer that we used for this example consisted of a front end with Nginx, which is a pretty conventional front end as well as HAProxy in the back connected to Nginx, which is actually determining the likelihood as well as the quality of connection going back to our application server. So really a combination of Nginx and HAProxy together forms us a very lean pass-through load balancing solution at a very minimal cost to us. So a small software load balancer, very great benefit. Great. Um, hey. Another one I see. Uh, okay, go for it. Mike, Mike, I was going to, this is Yuri from Wrightsville speaking. I noticed a Wrightsville question here, and I was going to jump in and answer that, if that's okay. 
leave. So I got a question here that says, um, how does rice scale technology know when to scale? And uh, Claudia was covering a little bit about that. You essentially set a trigger point. It could be CPU load. It could be connections per second. You tell your group of web servers in this case, if there's more than X load, and, and again, you can define uh, you can define the trigger point, and you can define the metric whether you care about uh, the, how busy the servers are based on the network interface card, the CPU load, and then you give it rules about how to add servers. And as Mike Cover was explaining, you also apply the same rules scaling down because you're paying for the servers per hour. You want to disengage them or deprovisioning them when you're not using them. So that's how that works. And 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 actually, the the LTEC, uh, platform takes some uh, sophisticated advantage of how that works. Uh, awesome. so we got, uh, I think that's another LTEC question here, Mike, if your clarity wants to grab it. Yeah, um, we got one right here. What kind of lead time is needed if I have PSDs ready for a microsite? I can actually um, answer that one. Really, we're looking at a couple weeks. Really, if you have PSDs, you're ready to go, you want to get going, uh, get your site up on our engine, uh, get scaled. Uh, a couple weeks max. I mean, obviously we showed we did we did two days with Mars, so there's uh, you know we definitely have a um, uh, understanding for people who need to get up quickly. Uh, we have resources in place for just that. So um, and we see uh, I'll just fill the number one real quick. We see a lot of questions about CDNs, uh, which is uh, which is a great question actually. So um, if well here's one. If I already use a CDN. Uh, how could it be incorporated into brand scale? Uh, we'd always like to recommend, uh, as we as we use we use Amazon's CloudFront for most of our CDN. We figure if you're hosting it on Amazon Web Services, you might as well use their CDN. Uh, it's, it's it's very available. Uh, it's it's fantastic actually. So what we um, we incorporate into brand scale for um, what you know for uh, content delivery. Uh, it is what it is, right? I think you need a CDN in order to truly be scalable. So we like to we like to uh, impress that upon our uh, clients. So um, I'll actually have plenty to answer uh, this one if you don't mind. What kind of sites do marketing people deploy? I, I'd have to say over the past few years, uh, a lot of the different types of sites that a marketing group would normally deploy tend to be based around WordPress, Drupal, Joomla or even a personal CMS that's been deployed beforehand. Oh, cool. Um, let's check if there's a right scale question here. Yeah, so right actually, scale? Mike, this is Yuri speaking. I see a question for Amazon, so I'd like to throw it over to uh, Mike Culver, if, if you're there, Mike. I certainly am. Uh, yep, I'm not muted this time. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I did uh, see a question here asking a little bit more about uh, what we just heard about from uh, LTEC, which is the uh, CDN known as Amazon CloudFront. And one of the uh, things that comes up frequently in questions, so I'm not surprised to see this question today, one of the things that frequently comes up as a question is, how do I distribute, especially something like an outbound marketing site that's, that's media rich, how do I distribute that and keep both the cost low and the latency low? Because if my site is hosted, for example, in the U.S., and my marketing campaign is global, well, what what's the ex user experience going to be if you know if the end users in Hong Kong or if they're in London or someplace like that? And so I think it's really important to uh, to take into account the fact that there's these uh, content delivery networks available, and in the particular case of Amazon, Amazon CloudFront is uh, tuned to work with Amazon Simple Storage Service, which is a place to store all that rich media. And you're able to uh, really lower the, the uh, uh, latency and the cost, especially, as you're trying to deliver this content worldwide. So it, it, as it turns out, this is a, a really useful tool in order to be able to, to accomplish the goals of something like a marketing site. So we have uh, we have another question for Eltec, uh, Mike. If you want, if you want to grab it, and then I see a right single question after that. Uh, sure. Uh, which one do you want to field? There's a ton. So take a look at these. All right. Um, is it possible? Uh, please discuss security for multi-tenant environments. 
Oh, uh, the uh, well, yeah. Well, there's there's a built-in uh, Amazon security as we as we as Mike will tell you uh, a lot better than I will. Their um, their SaaS uh, they have their type two audit uh, for um, uh, so they're obviously it's as secure as you, as as, uh, as any other data center. Uh, that's what we like to think and we like to say, and I, and I think it's completely true. I don't think uh, I think if you're if you're one if you're worrying about your marketing data. Uh, out there as a um, uh, as security, it's a little different than your financial data, right? I mean, marketing data is stuff that we all uh, don't mind people looking at uh, because that that's what it is, right? We're, we're, I mean, I'm sure there is there's a ton of um, uh, proprietary things that you don't want people to see. I don't know if your marketing uh, information in your website or microsite is one of them, uh, but obviously it's as secure as you want us to make it. Uh, Amazon is an extremely robust and secure data center. Uh, we trust it with our websites, our microsites. All, every one of our clients has absolutely no problem with us hosting on Amazon. Um, I, I think that's about it. Every, everything is, as I always say, um, it is as uh, secure as you want it to be, and Amazon is capable of making it uh, unbelievably secure, uh, for, for lack of a better term. Uh, so it's really, it's really might, uh, th This is Yuri from Rightsville speaking. I wanted to add some, something to that, that's where the value of LTIC comes to the forefront, by the way. Uh, for us, for RightScale, we provide software and a lot of the tools and capabilities to be able to apply the different security policies you might want to have. By talking to somebody like LTIC, they can actually talk with you, understand what your security needs are, and the concerns, and, and what's driving those, and then work with you to figure out what is the right way to implement those security policies and procedures to meet your objectives. So, yeah, there's a tremendous amount of flexibility, and you can you can bolt down the hatches in, in different ways to meet with your requirements, but you want to talk to somebody that knows how to uh, work with the with the tools that are available for that. And, and if I can just continue from here and talk about a right skill question that I have, uh, and let me just read it out of here. How long has right skill been around? And tell me about um, some of your customers. Uh, right skill actually launched a week after EC2, the Elastic Compute Cloud launched. So uh, we've been around about as long as anybody else uh, uh, in this uh, business, this whole idea of uh, cloud computing and infrastructure as a service. Uh, we have a wide breadth of different types of customers, lots and lots of uh, startups because they don't have a lot of uh, legacy apps to worry about migrating to the cloud, and, and many times they don't really have big budgets for equipment anyway, so great fit for them to use Amazon Web Services. There's no big check to write or big purchase order and you want to get going. But what we saw starting in uh, 2009 that has grown very big is large and medium-sized enterprises where they want to spin something up quickly, this concept of agility and being able to uh, move fast to implement something that you can throw up and, and the same benefits apply, not having to buy a lot of equipment up front and being able to leverage expertise from people and companies that have been doing it already. So we actually, anybody that uses a server is a potential customer of ours, so there's one application there, but we see tremendous growth in a lot of uh, uh, customer-facing websites. It's a really big application of that. And uh, with that, I think I'd like to pass the next question to Mike Clover from Amazon. Okay, thanks, Yuri. Uh, let me take a look here. So. Um, I think that one of the other questions that uh, comes up is what about managing all of this? And I, I you know, I, I think that I'm actually going to defer a lot of those management questions back to the obvious, which is that RightScale has a really robust management platform. It's certainly popular among the EC2 community. So we'd be uh, delighted to uh, to uh, just turn that back to Yuri here. Let's see, I can, uh, Yuri, can everybody hear me? I just noticed that uh, my network alert just said that. I, that I believe might... so. I can, okay. I can hear you fine. Okay. I'm in a different okay. city. So, yeah. The uh, computer's complaining that my network connection went south. So uh, in terms of managing it, there's any number of tools available, certainly. Um, but I believe that those of you who engage with RightScale will be extremely happy with what you with, with what you get with the RightScale platform. And, and of course, in the context of the webinar we're having today, the fact of the matter is that more than likely you're going to have, you're going to be looking to LTech to manage it for you in any case. So Mike, I would like to uh, give you the last question and then 
after that I'm going to bring the webinar to a close. Oh, well, I don't, I don't want to keep anybody. So let's just, uh, I'm really, let's just, All right. I think we should just probably wrap it up. So I'm just going to tell everybody. Let, let me uh, do a, in, in that case, let me do a wrap up. So what, what you've seen here today is uh, the Eltec uh, brand scale approach on how to help uh, people putting together their marketing projects on set up an infrastructure that will keep up with them and to an expected number of visitors. And we'll get into some of the details thereof. We noticed we generated quite a few questions, so we're very, very happy to take those one and one. And hence, you have the contact info for Eltec that you see on your screens. Uh, and we'd love to talk to you about your individual uh, needs and requirements so we can get into how we might be able to uh, help you with that. And Mike, I believe you have some closing words there. Yeah, yeah. I just want to um, let everybody know, feel free to give me a call. All my contact information is here. We're going to be distributing the, uh, the deck out and we're recording the webinar for everybody out there. Um, for the next 30 days, give us a call. Uh, we're happy to do a free cost analysis for you. So we'll compare your uh, internal costs versus your uh, costs of hosting it with us and uh, deploying it with, uh, with Brandscale. So there's a white paper for you to download. Uh, usually you have to sign up but uh, we're going to, uh, in order to download it, but uh, we're taking that away. You guys can just uh, get it at brandscale.net. Uh, it's a white paper showing, uh, it's based around that case study I talked about before, and it shows our architecture and how we built uh, that, that particular engine, uh, which has evolved a little, but that particular engine did very well for that, for that use case. And uh, feel free to visit our website, ltech.com, for information about us. Obviously, go to rightscale.com uh, and try out the developer edition. That's how we got hooked up uh, from the beginning. And uh, feel free to go over to uh, aws.amazon.com and uh, spin up some servers. So I'd like to thank everybody uh, for coming. It's been great. And uh, hope to hear from you guys soon. Thanks, everyone. And with that, I am bringing this webinar to a close. Thanks, and have a great day.